Bad bosses is a thing. Horrible bosses is a thing. It's so much of a thing that they made a movie, they made a sequel, and it did fantastic. And it was very funny, especially if you're in a leadership role. But what I want to ask you, are you doing any of the following which would make people consider you a bad boss? You might not even know it. Welcome to the channel, Leadership with Mike. On this channel, I help you become a more confident leader, and I do that with no nonsense sense, if that makes any sense. The first thing that will make you a bad boss, a terrible boss, a horrible boss, is that you're incompetent. You don't know how to lead. You don't know how to do the job. This isn't to say you don't know how to do your employee's job. You don't need to know that. You need to know about it, but you need to know how to lead. You need to know how to build trust and respect. When people don't trust you, when your team doesn't respect you, that means there's a great chance that they think you're incompetent. And the only way to fix that is to learn and make sure that you're a great leader, make sure that you're constantly updating, you're reading books, you're going to seminars, you're downloading free PDFs, you're doing whatever it takes to educate yourself and make sure that you are not incompetent. Because you are watching a video like this, I know that you want to be a good boss. So when you put the effort in, incompetency will disappear. The next thing that a bad boss will do is they will treat their team as though they don't matter. They will treat their team as if they're, they're just a machine. They just turn on, turn off. They clock in, they clock out. That is not how we as great leaders treat people. I remember working with a guy where I said, you know what, as a manager, I'm going to buy a coffee for this group of people. And tomorrow I'm going to go over here and visit and I'm going to buy a coffee. And his whole thought was, why are you buying them coffee? They get paid a check for the job they do. Why do you need to go above and beyond? And to me, that was mind blowing how he wasn't able to see that the simple act of gifting a coffee while having a conversation to get to know an employee as a person, how much impact that will have on the end of your day. Do not be like this person and overlook this simple, friendly gesture. The next thing that bad bosses do, and I know this is huge in the restaurant industry, is that they act like staff don't have lives outside. And why I say that restaurant industry is because I remember working and people were in university. They had exams and they were getting scheduled on a serving shift or a bartending shift the same time as their exam. Now, I want you to really think about this. You're the person in school. You've paid possibly tens of thousands of dollars to get to this exam. And your boss at a little restaurant decides to schedule it and tells you to make a decision. Come on, boss. You know the decision is easy. Your restaurant is out and the person or my education is in. So make sure. I know scheduling can be hard and it can be difficult with different people's schedules and their priorities, but we have to consider life events that people have, that you will have, that possibly your kids will have. Let's have empathy and make sure that we treat our staff like they have a life outside of work. Because here's the newsflash. They do. The next thing a bad boss does is they take all the credit. When something works out, what they do is they put on a presentation. They're like, well, I was able to accomplish this and I got them to do that. That is not what great bosses do. What great bosses do is when they take all the credit, it's when it doesn't work. That's when they're in the firing lane. They're making sure that they own the mistakes and they take that so that their team doesn't have to. But when the team wins, the great bosses stand up and they say, John was key. Sally was who we needed in this role. Josh is why we got this part completed on time and we exceeded expectations and we were under budget because of what Sue was able to do. That's what a great boss does is they make sure the credit goes to their team. What they don't do is they don't throw their team under the bus. This is kind of like standing in front of the firing squad but you don't go and say, well, John, he wasn't able to do this. And that's why the whole project went south. Well, if Sally was able to come and meet her client on time, they wouldn't be upset. 
We don't do that. We handle that in private. As you, as a boss, them as the employee who made an error, a mistake, whatever it might be, that is handled behind closed doors. That is handled one-on-one. That is not to be aired out for everybody to know. Because if you do that, you are the definition of a bad boss. Now, you may say you have the best intentions and you're trying to be a good boss. And what I'm gonna say to you is maybe, maybe you're listening to the wrong people. That's why in this video, I share who you need to be listening to and how you need to take some information with a grain of salt. I'll see you over there. Get your coffee. Ciao.